I'm gonna show you how to use Airtable to project manage your business and manage hundreds of thousands of tasks while having your team members being able to go in to your project management template and base and execute for you. Airtable is an amazing tool because it allows you to be able to scale massively through one software. In this example, I'm gonna show you how to set up your project management software from scratch. Now, what you're seeing here is your blank workspace. When you sign up for Airtable, you're going to first and foremost start up with a blank workspace. And the first thing you want to do is create your base. We're gonna title our base, my project management. And we're gonna call this blog PM, blog project management. When you get into a blank base, you're gonna have four standard columns. What I'm gonna do first and foremost is show you how to structure your project management, and then I'm gonna show you how to customize it for your specific needs. Now, this is super relevant because we have hundreds of clients that have come to us to scale their operations. We've had seven, eight, and nine figure companies work with us seeking our advice on how to best set up their operations. So I'm gonna walk you through my process in which we guide our clients through. Now, when you start with a base from scratch, the first thing I like to do, especially for project management, is leverage the first column for your theme. If in this example, we're pretending like I'm a blog writing company, uh, we're going to capture this as the blog. So to reiterate, the first column is where you want to really focus on the theme of that type of project management. If you are trying to project manage your personal tasks, you're gonna want your first column to be your personal tasks. So to really simply do that, you want to edit, go to the downward arrow, edit field, and then create the name. In this example, I have it as a single line text. Next, I'm gonna go through and define all the different types of columns that I want in my project management. Then I'm going to go and define what type of categorization I want in those columns and why you should have those. So first for your project management, you want to set up your different columns. Now the columns are how you group buckets of data because you're going to later manipulate them through different um, filters and groupings and new tabs. So if you're doing project management, whether it's through yourself or a team, there's gonna be a few consistent things that are gonna come up. One of the things I always like to call is stages in project management. So if we're writing blogs as an example, I have the idea ideation stage, right? I have the writing stage, I have the scheduling stage, and I have the posted stage, right? So these are the stages. I'm gonna come back to show you how we could pick what type of categorization we want. The assignee, um, it's super simple. Which team member is going to be responsible? We go back to status. From here, I think another relevant category is due date. And then, you know, when you're writing blogs, you sometimes want to be able to have further ideas or notes. Awesome. Now, once we have the, the starting place of all the things that we want to have to keep our project management organized, we need to define how are we actually going to categorize each of these columns? So when it comes to stages, I like to have a single select option. And then I go to add option here. So I'm going to be idea stage. So going back to why I do this, when you categorize these, you don't want a blog to be in the idea stage and the writing stage, right? So. So in this example, I created five or six different stages for the blog. Now, it's really important that I selected single select because when I create a Kanban board later, the single select is gonna be a very important stage to categorize. From here, we're gonna have team members. Now, in this field, you could tag users. One thing that's really cool about Airtable is that you actually don't have to pay for every single user. One thing that's really common in Airtable that you can do is have everyone log into a master login and instead of tagging users, you could either link it to another record where you can tag people that are in a separate base and in that separate base, you could have everyone's name and photo or you could also do what we did here and do single select and then type everyone's name, right? Adam, Johnny, Tyler, right? So we, this could be the blog writer, who's the blog writer, and then who could be our project manager, Juan, Shaq, Kobe. Okay, so due date, 
we're gonna want to change that field obviously from a single select to an actual date. And in notes, we're gonna to wanna to change that from a single line text to a long form text. This right here is sufficient enough for you to begin. Another option that you want to consider when starting to create inputs for your field is creating a form. Now a form is going to be something that you can leverage to send to your team. Hey, if you're walking, if you're trying to create ideas for blogs, I want you to take this link. So this is something that you could actually copy, save the link here. And you could actually have this blog form where now you could have a blog idea, right? So the blog idea might be uh, how to make Airtable PM base, right? And then you submit it. And if we go back in here, you'll actually see that it's already submitted. So forms are great because in project management, you wanna be able to have a way where team members while they're on the go and they're away from their laptops and their computers, they can actually add things into project management and they can actually tag different people. So going back to that form, you know, uh, let's do how to make a YouTube video. It's in the idea stage. The blog is Adam and we're gonna have Shaq manage it. And this is going to be due at the end of October. So what this allows us to do at scale is make sure we start to, when we come up with ideas for blogs, they are in here. Now, this can allow us to go through the process of adding different ideas and starting to project manage them. Once you have your ideas, you wanna make sure your stages are set up. One thing I always encourage you to do while setting up your project management tool is grouping it by stages, right? because you know blog three what this is going to easily show you to do or show you is how to break down where things are in the process now if, if you're starting to do this and you're doing this for clients because you're running an agency you want to also be able to have your clients right awesome so what i'm going to do is i'm going to take a moment i'm going to fill this all out and when I get back in five seconds, we are going to show you a more extensive video. Okay, so now what we have here is a more extensive, realistic view of what your project management setup can be. Now, what I like to do when I start to really get this project management tool set up and more filled out is categorize better. So if you are running a business and you have different people that are either reporting to you and they're writing for you, or you have different clients that you're managing, the easy thing that a lot of people start to do is they add new bases or new tables. What I actually want you to do instead of that, I want you to add new grids, right? So this, think of a grid as the grid is going to reference any subgrid off of your main grid view is going to be a reference to the main grid. What this subgrid is going to show you a subcategory. So in this example, I wanna focus on client A, project management. We'll get to that in a second. Another example of what this could be is um, Adam's blogs, right? So whenever I make these subcategories, it's referencing the main grid view, which is really important to, to think through because when I get down here, for client A, I'm going to create a filter where you click add condition and the category I'm gonna choose is client is client A. I will only see all my client A's work. I will group it by stages and now I could see where everything's at, right? I could also sort it by due date, right? So now you could start to see how if you have 10, 20, 30 clients, it starts to become a little bit easier by adding these filters and views for your project management because it allows you to stay organized by not getting too run off course. Now going back to the same process, if I go to Adam's blogs, we're gonna filter this, change the condition to the blog writer is Adam, right? And then we're gonna group it by stages or you could even group it by due date, right? You want to see what days things are coming up, right? 
So on 913, oh, this is in the ideation state. So that's not good. I usually like to group things by due date. And then I oftentimes like to add a column here, trend. I like to have trend because it shows on trend, off trend, right? So this is green, this is red, right? So it's kind of like green, yellow, red, right? So this is something that's very qualitative that if you look at it like here, I could start to say everything is on trend besides this one, which is off. Now. I could further filter and make filters around it being off trend. Let's go one layer deeper and I wanna show you how to use the Kanban boards. I think Kanban boards are one of the best tools that has been introduced into Airtable. Softwares like Trello are 100% Kanban boards. A Kanban board is a tool in a software that was created by the Japanese and what we call Six Sigma operations where it's a basic card process where you categorize things in different areas. So what we want, what I want to show you now is client BPM. Kanban boards are really amazing because if we go back to the thing that we care about this, that for the major categorization, which is this one is stages, right? We can now see where all the blogs are in process. Now, kind of going back into this, one thing that I really love about these boards, once they're filled out, same thing, I'm gonna filter this by client B. Now I could see exclusively where client B is, blog X, Y, Z, right? And you could add things, blog, right here. So as I'm writing it, you could you can, have someone that's moving from ideation say, you know what, I'm gonna actually start writing this blog. I've written this blog, I've edited it. It's really easy to see where things are in this process. Once things get completed, right, you might be thinking, okay, Jordan, you set this up, it's really easy to help manage things, move them through their categories, stay on top of them, but how do I make sure that I don't get overwhelmed? There's a filter that I really love and it's an is not filter, right? So I wanna focus on the stage is not posted. So I don't care when a blog gets posted. Once it's posted, I don't need to worry about it anymore, right? So in this example, let's just move it from edited to completed, right? So the blog's ready, the blog has now been scheduled and now the blog has been posted. So once I click posted, it is gone. This is very relevant for you because you might want to create another subgrid where all you have to do is focus on items that are posted. This is just a way to have some oversight. So kind of going back high level, in order to set up Airtable really effectively, you wanna first and foremost set up your category as your main column. From there, I like to identify what are all the different things that I need to have to stay organized. For me, what are the stages? Who is the owner of these projects? If it's, a, if it's related to a client, what's the client? When's the due date? Are there any notes? And is it on trend or off trend? From there, you could create forms where different team members could actually submit ideas or add different assignments into the tracker. Leveling out from there, as data gets larger and you get more sample sets of data into this one field, what you wanna to start to do is create different filters and different views in here, either through the, the Kanban boards, the different grid views. They even have some, they, they got some really great tools. You could even have calendar a calendar view in here. Right, so this is based on when things are actually due. So you could look at, you could log in and see, okay, do we have anything due in the next two weeks? Great, hey, let's go through the calendar, guys. I wanna walk through blog D, like what's everything I need to know about blog D, because that's the next blog that's due. Airtable is such an easy tool to set up and project manage because you could have meetings where you are the project manager, you set up a calendar view and all you're doing is you're basically managing the due dates and making sure things are on trend or off trend, right? If blog D is on trend, right? Or off trend, you could expand this record. You could say, great, we are on trend or hey, I'm starting to get a little concerned. I'm gonna move this to the status of medium. Same thing. Once you have your trends set up, you could once again 
filter things based on trend so you can keep a good eye on where things are in your process. So from a high level review, Airtable makes it very easy to categorize different things. If you wanna make hyper specific visuals, you can start to use air interfaces, but I believe Airtable has everything you need, starting with your main grid view, submitting ideas for through forms, using your different tools such as calendars, um, Kanban boards, and other grid views to filter and make sub views so team members could be set up for success. Leverage your different organizing, organizing tools such as stages, uh, such as owners, and such as due dates. When you do this effectively and you always have a project manager overseeing projects, it's very hard to fall behind. This is something that I've had several clients use in the seven, eight or nine figures. Now that you've watched this and now that you've gotten an understanding of how to set a project management, it is pretty easy, but it's also very easy to get off course very quickly. If you really enjoy this and you want more help setting up your softwares and your organizational systems, make sure you click subscribe to follow my channel to get access to more tips and tricks on how to set up your softwares and your systems in your business. And if you need help running the operations of your business, go to the calendar link below where you could set up a consultation with me or my team where we will build you a plan on how you could scale to your next million or $10 million in your business. Thank you.